Hey everybody, I'm Derek. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing my third video in my series of wire feed welding basics videos. Today I'm talking all about gas cylinders and how to buy them. So I'm not going to talk about any of the legal stuff here because I don't know any of that. I think that there are some, uh, because it's such a safety thing, I'm not talking about transportation, nothing like that. You know, that is up to you, but just where to buy them, where's the best place to buy them? Leasing versus rent, uh, leasing and renting versus buying or buying used. So that's kind of the things I'm going to cover here. And uh, just remember, I'm a DIY welder. So for those of you that aren't familiar with my channel, I just do welding for myself. I'm not a professional welder. I've never been paid to lay a single weld bead in my entire life outside of a few things I've sold. Just keep that in mind as I go through this video. The other thing is just remember that whenever it comes to these gas cylinders, things can be super different from town to town, city to city, state to state, probably even more so country to country. And so I'm talking specifically about shielding gas cylinders here in this video. So let's just start with renting, uh, leasing versus buying. So in my experience, right off the bat, as a DIY level welder, uh, what I was seeing was that it's going to be cheaper just to buy it. There might be a little more upfront cost, but it's going to save you money over time down the road. It seems like what I've kind of gathered is that the only time it's really worth renting these bottles is if you're just going through a ton of them. So being a professional welder that welds all day every day for your living, where you go through a lot of these bottles. I've had this bottle for almost almost a year now and it's like a 150 or 175 cubic foot bottle. I don't remember exactly how big it is. I have found it to be cheaper to just go ahead and buy if you're gonna be doing hobby uh, DIY, DIY level welding. I'm sure this includes farm and ranch for those guys that are like, you know, on maybe smaller scale farms that weld maybe once a week or once every couple of weeks or something like that. Certainly not the people that weld every single day. I'd imagine it'd be very, very expensive to be buying up $600 bottles of shielding gas and to own six or seven of them. When you got a business, I think it just seems like it makes a little more sense to rent or lease those bottles. So since I'm a DIY level welder, I'm going to be, and I pretty much recommended buying as the option for DIY welders or farmer ranch guys or whatever, people that just aren't welding every single day. And since I'm, re since I'm recommending buying, I'm going to go over the places to buy and basically my least recommended my, to my most recommended. So tractor supply is like my least recommended. I'll tell you why in a little bit. Then like you could look at your Napa, like your local auto parts store. I don't think that O'Reilly's or AutoZone sells shielding gas cylinders. Uh, to my knowledge, please let me know in the comments below if they do. I've never seen it advertised or anything like that from any uh, of those companies, but my local Napa does swap out, but they just use Praxair as their supplier. So I think your third option is and this is probably my most recommended because then I'll talk about buying used but that's just going to your air gas Praxair you know your mom and pop local welding supplier so let me tell you real quick about why uh, tractor supply is my least recommended and that is because I did a little bit of research before making this video tractor supply has the 125 cubic foot gas cylinders so that's even smaller than this listed for $399.99 so 400 bucks to buy 125 cubic foot cylinder and then they want to charge you $59.99 to refill it. I imagine all they're going to do is just swap it. And so that's a $400 cylinder that you probably or may be getting full. I'm not sure if they're going to charge you the $59.99 to get the gas in it as well. Or if that just is kind of included in the upfront cost. That could potentially be uh, $360 or sorry, $460 to get started into a 125 cubic foot gas cylinder, which is a ton of money. That's a huge investment, probably more than a lot of people spent on a lot of their welders. This is a 40 easy weld, 140 MP. It's a multi-process welder. I paid like 400 bucks for it. So the gas cylinder would almost be more than probably a lot of people watching this this is welders. They're, they're welders. That was said weird, but I think you got what I meant. To compare that to my local Praxair, who is what I use, they are charging $264 for a 125 cubic foot and $46 to replace it. He told me I'd have to pay for the gas in order to, or once I bought the cylinder, then I'd also have to pay for the gas inside of it. And so he said I'd be out the door at about $310. So you'd still be out the door $90. If that $399 price does include the gas on your first purchase, you're still saving 90 bucks by going to your local Praxair. But remember, it could be different. I think that's a locally quoted price. 
Yours might be a little more, might be a little less. I imagine if you're in a city and not such a rural, far out of the way place like I live, you're probably gonna get better deals on your gas cylinders, I'd imagine. So I asked about the 40 footers as well. Online, Tractor Supply has the 40 cubic foot gas cylinders listed at $269.99, so $270 for a 40 cubic foot. And the Praxair guy said, uh, he, I said 40, he said, okay, the 55s because apparently they don't have 55s or they're the same thing. They're just calling it different numbers. I don't know, but he said the 55 cubic footers, so potentially more gas are uh, $156 to buy. And then he didn't tell me how much the gas would be. So just the gas cylinder alone is $100 less uh, at my local Praxair versus Tractor Supply. Let's just say that it costs you the $37.99 that Tractor Supply is charging to pay for the gas and the cylinder that you're buying. You're still saving money over at Praxair. So if you've been hearing these numbers and uh, not really registering them, which happens to me sometimes when people start throwing a bunch of numbers at me on YouTube videos, basically, you're not just saving five or ten dollars going with your local welding supplier over tractor supply you're saving literally 50 hundreds of dollars so basically going to your big gas industrial supplier or industrial gas supplier i guess it would be more correctly said is probably your best option so i'm going to talk about my third option and that's or i guess it's my fourth and that's going to be buying them used and there's a whole lot to that it's way more than just going on your Facebook marketplace and picking one up. There's some things you need to know about it. You could be potentially wasting some money. So I'm gonna bring you in closer to this tank and we'll talk about those things. Okay, so the first thing to note is the collar. Now, this is one thing that I'm not very confident in what I'm saying. I am confident enough in it that I feel like I can say it. I'm totally willing to be corrected in the comments, but basically it seems like that with the smaller tanks, you're gonna be safe to buy them even if there's a name stamped in them because apparently they don't rent these out. That is what my local welding supplier, my mom and pop, not my Praxair, that's what my mom and pop shop told me. And uh, so whether or not that's true, we'll see because the original one, this is not the original tank I bought. The original gas cylinder I bought had the local mom and pop welding supplier that I have here in my local area. Uh, their name was stamped in here and it was a blank welding supply. So my first thing after I paid for it was I was really worried that they were gonna be like, oh, thanks for bringing that tank back to us that was uh, rented from us years ago that hasn't been brought back since. So uh, if you're gonna be buying some big cylinders, if there's a name stamped on the collar, I just walk away from them, don't buy them. These smaller bottles, I think you are more safe to pick them up. Obviously, I'm getting this from Praxair. Actually, you probably can't quite see that down there, but that's who I've been purchasing my gas from lately, and there's nothing stamped on the collar. It's an owner bottle. If you can find one of the big gas cylinders without anything stamped in the collar, I would have to think you would probably be safe, but I would definitely call your local welding supplier and see what they have to say about it. That's probably one of the things I really should mention here, is that you need to call your local welding supplier and get information before you buy a used one just to do your homework to make sure that you are not going to be throwing your money away getting a stolen or way past due rented gas cylinder so let's talk about the date here so this is kind of what i think is most important to look at when you're looking at buying these gas cylinders so this was last hydrostatic tested i guess in 2019 i picked this cylinder up sometime i would guess around early 2020 and so that's when it was last hydrostatic tested and if you can also see this little plus sign here that means that they can go up 10% more than the bottle's rated capacity, that it passed that test, it is safe to go 10% higher. Now I picked these gas cylinders up at 2,500 PSI, so I'm not sure exactly what they are rated for, but basically they can go 10% higher, that's what that means. You've got a good bottle, it's gonna last you for a long time. Now the star means that it can go 10 years past this date for the next hydrostatic test, as if that star wasn't there, it'd be five years beyond this. So in 2024, you'd have to retest it if that star wasn't there. So the reason why that matters is if, if you're buying an owner bottle and you go ahead and purchase this bottle and it is past date, there is a really good potential that you're gonna have to pay for the hydrostatic test. Now, uh, I wouldn't risk it myself, but I will say this, that uh, when I've been switching out with Praxair, they don't even look at the bottle I'm giving them to make sure that the date's good. They just look at the bottle, they're like, oh, it's that size. Like I said, I'm pretty sure 175, and they just swap it out. So that's 
that's something to keep in mind. I read someone online say that their hydrostatic test was $12. I don't remember exactly what I was told how much a hydrostatic test was, but I'm pretty sure it was somewhere up in the between $50 and $100 range. It was way more than I was wanting to spend because I didn't understand these markings and I thought the bottle that I had bought after I bought it, I thought it was out of date and I was really worried about having to pay the extra for the test. So one other thing to keep in mind is these bottles do leak. The bottle that I was swapped out with for the original used bottle I had leaked most of my gas out. I'd come out and weld with it maybe once a week, once every other week or something like that. And I was finding that it was about 100 to 200 PSI lower every single time I came out than how I left it before. And I did run out of that gas tank in about three or four or five, six months, something like that. This one doesn't leak and it's lasted me well over a year now. So just a few things to keep in mind. Be very careful when picking up used gas cylinders. I paid $150 for the same size tank. It was like a 175 gas cylinder plus an oxygen cylinder that was like an 80 cubic foot. And I paid 150 bucks for both of them. And uh, so I came out pretty well on that deal. That was pretty fair in my opinion outside of the fact that I had to go buy uh, more gas for both of them. And then I ended up selling that 40 cubic foot gas cylinder for like 80 bucks or something like that so i was able to save myself quite a bit of money buying it used all right guys hopefully this video was all coherent and you got some useful information out of it i really appreciate you watching if you did get some useful information out of it please go ahead and give me the thumbs up and uh, if you're not subscribed already click subscribe for uh, more welding videos like this i do a lot of different types of videos they all pretty much have to do with the shop at this point I am starting to develop a 10 acre property that is going to be a huge project that takes a long time. So uh, that'll be in the series of videos every now and then, but it's mostly about tools and welding and mechanic work really. So I do a little bit of woodworking here and there as well. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I hope to see you in my next video.